All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Dr. Thomas Zweifel, who is in Zurich in Switzerland. How are you doing, doctor? I'm doing great. Uh, by the way, you have a very cool name. You know, oh, thank you. My last name Zweifel, that you pronounce correctly, uh, is actually called. Oh wow! Excellent. <laughs> um, and uh, and so you've uh, and so you've had, you, you've had quite an interesting uh, interesting journey, as you say, from ski instructor to to CEO. Um, you've worked as a construction worker, actor, director, animator, canvasser, fund uh, fundraiser, fundraiser, probably same thing too, uh, copywriter and ski instructor <laughs> in, in Davos. Uh, and today, uh, you know, you work, uh, you know, you work with um, with CEOs and people. And what I wanted to talk about is you, you were saying that leading through language, right? That's what we're going to talk about today. So. So, mm -hmm. Thomas, let's talk about what, why is language so important? You know, this maybe gets into a little bit of philosophy. I, I believe that uh, through language, we literally generate the reality that we encounter. So, for example, if my wife says, I must go to work today, literally in the wording, she generates a kind of a prison uh, of her own making. And mm -hmm. you know, if we say my boss is a jerk, then very likely my boss will be a jerk uh, because my brain is conditioned in a way that I, it will only see what I already believe in before, right? So it will only select the evidence that, uh, that is consistent with the prior belief. So I believe that communication is literally the water that leaders swim in. Um, and the good news is effective communication can really handle just about any issue, you know, from misunderstandings to failed mergers to a failed sale or a lost client, all the way to preventing divorce or wars or lawsuits. Mm -hmm. yeah. So communication has the power to handle just about any issue. And and the uh, part of that issue, though, is uh, I think that we live in a culture today, uh, Thomas, where language is quite casual. People don't pay that much attention to the language. So I think that's part of the problem. And we've become so, you know, anything goes. I mean, especially with texting and all this kind of stuff is you don't even have to look at. So I think people have become very kind of throwaway in what they're saying. Yes, uh, I completely agree. I, I would say that we've become very unconscious about, or maybe we've always been unconscious about the way we communicate. And we think that what we say is only a representation of reality and that it doesn't actually create reality. I'll give you an example. The Hebrew word for word is davar, but davar also is Hebrew for the thing. So basically what I put into words will become things. Or another way of saying it is, Whatever I say, I better treat it like a commitment. Like, are you committed to your, your boss being a jerk? Are you committed to being in the prison of, of, of your job? Or, you know, are you creating another reality? Yeah, no, I think, and I think that's a really important, uh, an important distinction. And I think if you think, if you look back, I mean, and, and both of us uh, uh, pre-internet i'm presuming um and uh if, if you look if you look back to those days and if you look back even to your parents generation it's like when somebody like wrote a letter i mean it was a sit down it was a it was a conscious thing it took a while you know choosing the words properly and as i said yeah today we're in a more of a of a throwaway and i think that's the point there isn't it doctor the people don't understand the power of words and and the and when you put words out there you know how they impact impact your life. So what, what are some of the steps that people could take to being more, say, intentional with their language? Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you're mentioning the internet, uh, because the, the ground rule is that uh, only 7% of communication are actually in the words, right? So this is uh, based on uh, Albert Merabian at the, at the University of California, Los Angeles. <clears throat> he said that only 7% are the words. Now the question is, what are the other 93% of communication? And he found that it's basically 
uh, I don't remember exactly, but 37% are uh, the, the, the body language and mimics. And then another 55% is the tone of voice and the context in which I speak. So if you have the internet and I, I communicate on WhatsApp or email or sure. Zoom, uh, you and I are communicating right now via, via the internet, right? So a lot of the meaning gets lost and there's a lot of opportunity for misunderstandings. So what you have to do is basically even more than before, stand in the shoes of the other side and see how do they think or how, how do they interpret reality or what's their mindset and to see if I can communicate in such a way that actually is relevant to that person. I call that listening to the listening. So can I actually, while I'm speaking, can I listen to what the other person might be hearing? Because they're, they're, they're maybe not hearing what I'm saying, right? Yeah. No, and I think that's and I think that's a really important point as well. And I think that's an art that a lot of people have lost. And, uh, you know, that's why they end up in, in problems. But I mean, that's what they do in uh, in in therapy in couple therapy, group therapy, family therapy is is teach people how to listen to what listen to the other person and understand what they're saying. And I think and listen and understand what you're saying, which is the point you're making there is listening to the listener listening to you, if that makes sense. Exactly. And a little story comes to mind. A few years ago, I was talking to a CEO about the importance of two-way communication, right? That communication is a two-way street. And he grew kind of adamant. <laughs> he, he said, of course, I do two-way communication. I write to my people and I talk to my people. <laughs> he completely, he had no idea that there's this whole other dimension of communication, which I think if you're in sales, everybody knows. I mean, you cannot do sale if you're just broadcasting about how great your product is. Nobody wants to hear that. What people want to hear if being heard. Interests. And that's the and I think that's the um, that's the major issue here is is the fact that um, yeah, people don't want to be talked at. They want to have a conversation and they want to they want to listen, they want to interact, and more importantly, they want to be understood. Any competent salesperson knows that it's not about uh, broadcasting about how great your product is, but to actually be in the shoes of the customer and listening to the customer and seeing what are their dreams, what are their fears, what are their concerns, what do they need? And then when I speak, I can customize my speaking to that, to that listening. Yeah, and because put, put, I think that's when I sell way more. Yeah. yeah. And part of what you're saying there is, is actually is, you know, taking yourself outside of yourself and putting yourself, you know, the empathy part. But also, I think there's a certain self discipline that comes with that, because you're obviously you're motivated, you want to sell, you want to get this over the line, but you're disciplining yourself to have a proper communication. Absolutely right. And you know the other thing, and, and I talk about this in my in my book, Communicate or Die, and, and I chose the title very very carefully because I, I literally believe that things die. You know, whether it's a merger or a sale or a client uh, or, or or a relationship, you know, mm -hmm. can die if we don't communicate consciously. And there are certain sins that people commit. For example, if I if I make an ultimatum, right? I'm trying to force something. Uh, I say, you know, if you don't listen to me or if you, if you don't do it my way, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut the relationship or I, I will force you to do it or I will judge them, I will blame them, I will gossip about them or spread rumors. Uh, and those are all kinds of communications that are actually backward oriented, right? They, they go back yeah. to the past instead of creating a new future. So I would just ask people to be extra careful about you know, are you judging people? Are you blaming them? Or could it be that they hear you blaming them, which is the same thing? Communication always happens in the in the perception of the of the listener. It's not yeah. you can't say, you know, well, I didn't mean it that way. Why did <laughs> why do you take it so personally? No, if the person heard it that way, then it was that way. Yeah. And often the often there's even clues in our own language. I mean, sometimes we say things like um, well, listen, listen, Thomas, I'm not saying this to be critical, but here I'm going to criticize you. Now. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's what I call the bullshit sandwich, right? So, so 
I yeah. believe in you. I'm on your side. You're a complete jerk. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to help you clean it up. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I think so. I think there's a real need as we go forward. Um, you know, particularly in the world that we live in today, is there's a real need for people to revisit communication and really understand language and understand how how they use it as i said at the outset unfortunately we live in a very casual kind of throwaway culture where people don't don't pay attention uh, don't pay attention to it but i think the on the on the upside of it uh, doctor this is for sales people for everybody is that if you do pay attention to your language you'll stand out mm, absolutely right you said you stand out right Yes, yes, you yes, stand I, I absolutely agree. I, I think that, and, and I'm, I'm showing in the book, there's basically, listening is not just a, a light, like a light switch to turn on or off. It's, it's, a, it's a repertoire of different levels that goes all the way from ignoring to controlling to respecting all the way to generating and listening to the listening. And, and I don't have time here to go through all mm -hmm. the levels, but I completely agree with you. If you master that or even if you have some degree of competence in listening you will stand out in the way that people will flock to you they will want more of that because they, they feel like they can be themselves they are heard and you know when you're when you're heard you you have more room to be and that's why i called it communicate or die when when somebody listens to you that's an amazing gift and i think as a salesperson we can do that right we can grant people the power of our listening and they will discover things that they didn't even know and we will learn something we will get intelligence we will learn something new as well so so it's a kind of a win-win situation yeah and and it is and it's and it's really interesting what, what you outlined there the director is just the the feeling in the that you can uh, generate in the other people or person that you're talking to because of of that consideration and it's almost like to how often today does do you say something to people uh, to somebody and they stop for a moment and they say hmm, let me just be clear on that i understood what you said and then let me think about it for a moment and give you an answer that that just doesn't happen very often <laughs> <laughs> yes and what you just described is actually the level of respecting so that's the neutral where i basically say did i understand you correctly i'm assuming you said xyz and then I can go from there and I can go even a step further. And I call that uh, empathizing. So basically to listen for the subtext, you know, there's a subtext in what every person is saying. For example, if my mother says to my father, you know, Heinz, aren't you cold? There's certain subtext in there called, you know, bring me a sweater or I'm cold or I, I, I feel helpless and you're supposed to be my husband. You're supposed to take care of me. So you can see in that simple question, there's so much subtext underneath. And if you can reveal that or, or pull it to the surface, or at least be cognizant of it, it will make you a much better negotiator or salesperson or human being, actually. Yeah, no, and I love that example because you say like, oh, um, Thomas, aren't you cold? It could mean that I'm cold and I want the heat on right now. So it's not, I'm actually, I'm not actually asking you a question at all. <laughs> That's correct. It's posing as a question, but it's yeah. actual, it's actually a demand in hiding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you don't even need to know my mother to know that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, but there, but there you go. I mean, there you go. It's, it's just a fascinating, just simple example there about, about how, I think uh, how a lot of people, a lot of us kind of walk around oblivious to the layers of communication. Again, what you just said is, you know, I can say something, but there may be layers of subtext built into that. Mm -hmm. But if the other if the other person or if I'm on the receiving, end, if I'm not even really listening to the initial thing properly, there's no way I can even like start to consider subtext. Yeah, and you know, there's a big pitfall that you're projecting something on, onto the other person, right? So we all have our filters, and you know, sometimes it's like, well, this is a woman, so obviously she's going to be a bad driver, or this person is black or white or yellow. Mm -hmm. So we have our we have our filters through which we hear the communication, and if I can leave people with one thing, it's basically, you know, listen one minute longer than may be comfortable. The moment you want to interrupt the person and say, I now need to say my brilliant idea, and otherwise I'm going to explode, you know, uh, to maybe just hold back for a moment and say, okay, what if I listened one minute longer? 
maybe the solution will show up. Maybe something else will show up that I didn't foresee. Maybe I can listen in a new way and something beautiful could, could come out of that. I'm not talking about, you know, you have to listen to everybody this way, but to at least have consciousness and a certain choice about how you listen to people, uh, whether yeah. you shut them down or not, right? Yeah, no, I, I, I love that. I love what you just said there is that idea of, of you know, listening for maybe that minute longer or that point when, because the point when you're getting your idea and your answer formulated in your head, you start to get really excited. And, you, and as you said, you're bursting to to say it. So at that point, you've already stopped listening, really. Um, yes. So if you can, if you can pull back for a moment and say, yeah, okay, okay, let me just listen a bit longer. I mean, that takes some discipline, but as as you outlined, it can be very powerful. It, it in my view, it makes the difference between a sale and, and not a sale. Yeah. You know, yeah, the, biggest, I, the biggest contracts I ever sold, uh, and I, I used to sell big contracts as a, as a consultant as well, mm -hmm. when I, before I sold my company. Uh, and the biggest contract I ever sold was I asked, I went in, I asked a good question. And for example, where do you want to be in five years? And mm -hmm. what's missing for that today? And then the guy just talked and talked and talked for about 40 minutes. I took tons of notes. I wrote the notes up in a contract and he signed the contract and that's it. That was $200,000 later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there you go. I mean, you wrote the, you wrote the contract, like literally based on providing him with the right environment to really ex uh, explain and expand upon his issues. And therefore, uh, as you said, I mean, he really wrote the contract for you. Exactly. He, he dictated it to me. And then, when he read it, it was like his own words. So he was like, wow, this is really brilliant. Because yeah. people, usually, people usually think that whatever they think is pretty brilliant, right? So they yeah. always agree with themselves anyway, so. Well, they do, because there is a rule of communication. <laughs> There's a rule of communication that uh, obviously the people believe conclusions they come to themselves over anything anybody else can tell them. So to your point is, you know, your, part of your job is to help them come to the correct uh, conclusion. And especially if you can, if you can give them their own words back, that's even better. Exactly. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, listen, Doctor, this has been fantastic. Uh, all of uh, Dr. Thomas Weifel's uh, information is going to be below this video, including you know, links to his site and book, etc. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do these days. Me, right now? Yes. Uh, let's see. I My favorite... Uh, work that I do is uh, I, I write books. So I'm, I'm writing three books right now. I, in fact, I wouldn't recommend that. I'm writing three books with two <laughs> co-authors <Wow. laughs> right now. Uh, one is on strategic intuition. One is on uh, leading leaders. You know, how, how can I breed a culture of leadership around myself? And one is about mega projects. And again, how the human side is really what destroys mega projects or what makes it go over budget or, or uh, over time or fail altogether. Um, so, you know, I love being in the, in the exploration of what it means to be human, especially in this time of automation and artificial intelligence and robots to actually see what is it that we as human beings can do. And I, I think communication is really the, the one thing that will always be a human a human uh, trait that uh, we can use to, to make a difference and to empower human beings and to create a future that literally does not exist today. Yeah, no, I, 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 I love that, Doctor. I love what you're doing. I, I love the, the thrust of it. I think it's so, so important, as you say, in the era now of, of automation and you know, bots and everything like this. It's really, it's really important that we don't lose the power of language and the power of communication. In fact, we can sit on top of all of these technologies and make the world a better place if we communicate better, right? Exactly. That's perfect. Yeah. Uh, a beautiful, well, thank a beautiful you. way to complete the, the conversation. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Um, <laughs> thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.